My beloved brothers and sisters, what a beautiful month of Ramadan. The countdown to the last 10 nights of Ramadan, what is the big deal? That's a question. The answer is, it's a massive deal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Within these 10 nights, there is one night that is more in terms of value than a thousand months, which is 84 odd years. And Allah speaks about this. Laylatul Qadri Khayrun Min Alfi Shahr. The night of decree is better than a thousand months. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking about it. So when is this night of decree? Well, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Taharraw Laylatul Qadri Fil Witri Min Al Ashri Al Awakhiri Min Ramadana. Search for the night of Qadr or the night of decree in one of the odd nights from among the last 10 nights of this month of Ramadan. So that would mean that I need to kick off from the very first of those 10 nights, which is the 21st, or the eve of the 21st and the 21st fast. Now, subhanallah, we're taught so many things regarding this particular season. It is one of the best seasons that you can have. The primary aim is to achieve the forgiveness of Allah. Now, how do I prepare for meeting these last 10 nights? Number one is, do you know there are many people who sin in the month of Ramadan? Become conscious of this and abstain from it and seek the forgiveness of Allah for it. People sin, sin sometimes major sin in the month of Ramadan. I was asked a question to, by someone to say, I committed adultery in Ramadan in the night. And that is unacceptable. My brothers and sisters, even outside the month of Ramadan, it's not to be. So in the month of Ramadan, it's even worse. Now, if someone has done that, is there hope for them during Ramadan? The answer is, well, if you're going to repent to Allah, it is the season of repentance. It is the season of forgiveness. So you must still repent, seek the forgiveness of Allah, ask Allah's forgiveness and change your ways. Promise Allah not to do that again. And Allah will forgive you because this is the season of forgiveness. Now, we need to quit sin, number one. Also work on your bad habits to welcome the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Make sure that you have eradicated your bad habits. People have bad habits. I mean, smoking is a bad habit. Give it up completely. It's better for you with the number of people being affected by this virus. It's important for us to ensure that we look after our health and our bodies and so on. So my brothers and sisters, make that resolution. Here I am inviting you to do better for your own body. How can you say I'm wrong? How can you look at me and say, well, I'll never quit smoking? Subhanallah, please do that. Not just for the sake of Allah, but even for your own sake. And there are so many other bad habits. People are on drugs. We need to welcome these last 10 nights of Ramadan by promising that that's it. It's over. Our, our uh, entire relationship with that which was wrong is going to be cut. And you will do yourself a favor because we're going to meet Allah one day. And we must make sure that we've done the right things. We are human. We falter. Sometimes we may fall, but get up. This, these are the gifts of Allah. Allah has kept the value of the last 10 more than the first and second 10, although every single night of Ramadan is valuable. Now, we seek the forgiveness of Allah. We make sure that we fulfill the duties unto Allah. Many people don't pray during Ramadan. I mean, what's the point? Subhanallah. How can you not pray? How can you miss your prayers during the month of Ramadan? This is a blessed month where Allah wants us to be disciplined. He wants us to gain closeness to Him. We've heard that. So Allah wants that for us. It's important that we fulfill our duties unto Allah. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, remember that you must fulfill your obligations unto Allah, especially your salah. Also, let's welcome the last 10 nights, Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, by becoming better in the way we dress, in the way we dress. We need to cover appropriately and then we should try and ensure, according to the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we wear slightly looser clothing, that we use a material that is not so thin or see-through. And all these are steps towards improvement in our modesty. It's very important because you're not supposed to display your figure in public, male or female. You're not supposed to intentionally, you know, seek that attention upon your body as a believer. That's a teaching of Islam. So, yes, you can dress in the most beautiful way, but let it be elegant on one hand. And at the same time, let it be that which is acceptable in the eyes of Allah. Surely we love Allah. Does Allah want you to... Expose yourself, show your body parts. 
you know, try and display what you've been endowed with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us more conscious of this. So this is a time to revisit the entire wardrobe and see where we can change it for the pleasure of Allah. Or if you have that which is, mashallah, you know, uh, really hot and sexy, make sure that you're wearing it at the appropriate times, you know, with your spouse and so on. And if you're going to be displeasing Allah, it's not worth it. It's really not worth it. And to be honest with you, we, we must make those changes for the pleasure of Allah. What do we gain? These are the organs. We are taught that the organs themselves will be bearing witness for us or against us on the day of judgment. And this is why the tongue will speak, the feet will speak, the hands will speak. Listen to what Allah says. يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ or يَكْسِبُونَ Allah says on that day their hands, their tongues, their hands, their feet will bear witness uh, regarding what they earned or what they did. Now why would we like those organs to bear witness against us when it was quite easy for us to use the organs in the right direction and to also make sure that they were covered in a way that Allah wanted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true liberation. Amin. So in the run-up to the last 10 nights, the countdown, we need to make these changes one after the other. You know, it reminds me of a drag race. I don't know if any of the young out there are probably interested in drag racing or racing with your cars. Before the big day, you're fixing your vehicle, you're ensuring you have your your turbos in place, your free flows in place, the type of fuel, the type of oil, the type of spark plugs, the type of engine, the type of automation, the type of gears, that everything before the race, you're preparing everything one by one by one, making sure that everything will help you to win the race. And so you're putting it in place. The same would apply. You, you want to win that race, you probably will if you've worked very hard on your motor vehicle or at least you'll break a record with that particular vehicle. So the same would apply to us. Similarly, when you are preparing for the big race, the grand final 100 meters, you know, you have a relay of say 4 by 100. We, we, we've done that since we were uh, young and you run the 100, uh, meaning the baton is passed on, the second 100, the third 100. The final stretch, you know, the home stretch is something that is very important. That's where all the excitement is. Same would apply to a football match. All the excitement is packed in the last 10 minutes or the last 10, 15 minutes of that match because we know that people have done as well as they could and this can change anything and everything. With Ramadan, obviously it's an act of worship. It's not a game. But similarly, the home stretch towards the end is where you must make sure you've got everything in place. Did I seek forgiveness? Yes. I quit my sins? Yes. If I've sinned in Ramadan, I still ask Allah's forgiveness. It's not too late. I'm going to change my way of dress. I'm going to change my way of speech. My brothers and sisters, wallahi, we're lacking. <clears throat> we're lacking when it comes to the way we speak. We are believers. We should speak with beautiful words. Stay away from swear words, bad words, immodest, immoral words, that which is unacceptable in the eyes of Allah. Don't use those words. It doesn't cost you a thing. Stay away from these words. I promise you, recently on social media, there is an increase of these bad words. Young Muslim boys and girls who believe in Allah. Sometimes they're dressed so well. They're, they look like blessed people. And then you hear them lip syncing or using words that are terrible. Lip syncing a song that has in it some unacceptable words. And in public and, and posting it and, you know, more or less immortalizing their sin. Imagine after you die, all that's going to still be online. And people will be, you know, getting a kick out of listening to you saying the wrong things or wearing and doing the wrong things. I mean, think about that. You know, we talk about sadaqa jariya, people who are giving a charity that's going to last for long. There is even a sin that would be jariya, that would be <clears throat> lasting long because we do it in a way that it continues even after we've died. Don't do that. Delete those things. It's not worth it. Use it for something moral, something good. When you die, you will be proud when you meet with Allah. Oh Allah, this is what I did on TikTok. This is what I did on social media, on Instagram. This is what I did on Facebook. This is what I did with my WhatsApp, with my phones. These are the videos I made. This is what I... We're going to meet with Allah. Be conscious of it. This is the run up to the countdown to the most blessed days within the year, perhaps. In terms of the month, it's Ramadan. And in terms of the nights... It's definitely the nights of uh, the last 10 nights of Ramadan. 
Now, one might ask, well, which are more blessed? Is it the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah or these ones? Those are two different things. In Dhul Hijjah, the first 10 days have the most uh, value from all the days of the year, right? In, in terms of a season. Those are 10 days in a row. Here, it's the nights that were, are being spoken about, the last 10 nights. So we say the countdown to the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Now, imagine when we meet with Allah, we're going to be presenting our deeds and it's for ourselves and Allah is there and it's going to be quite embarrassing if we have deeds that are unacceptable. What did you gain by all of that? I mean, people might have said, oh wow, you might have got a million views. That's even worse. Do you know that on TikTok, you have to really do something very silly or nude or immoral in order to get the views and the likes? And did you know that that is exactly the opposite of what a believer should be doing. So if you were to do something immoral to get the likes and the views, you need to realize that what happened there is actually getting sins and piling them up. Subhanallah, I'd rather not have done that. I mean, for people to say, wow, wow, what were they saying wow about? Something sinful. So you spread it and you actually beamed it. And these platforms can be used for some real good. And there are people using them for some real good stuff. May Allah bless all of you and all of us. I mean, but my brothers and sisters, be a little bit more conscious of it. Imagine doing something so much in the displeasure of Allah to get the pleasure of the people, to get them to say, yay. And people become immoral. Worst thing, meaning they're going to comment about you, your body, the way you move it, the words that were said and all the dirt and all the filth. What did you gain from it? Did it really help you in your life to achieve something meaningful? Did it help you get married to the right person? Did you gain happiness? Did you have the children that Allah you know, would bless you with? Was it a blessing? Did you look after them? And so on. There is a lot that we can talk about. But when I'm talking of the countdown to the last 10 nights of Ramadan, become conscious of what you're doing, what you're saying. Do you read the Quran? Do you fulfill your five daily prayers? Start that. This is the preparation of your vehicle for the main day of the race, right? So my salah needs to be in order. My dress needs to be in order. My recitation of the Quran needs to be in order. My relationships need to be in order. Seek the forgiveness of Allah even prior to these 10 days. And then even during these 10 days, we will continue to seek the forgiveness of Allah. And there is a beautiful quality that Allah loves. When you forgive others, Allah will forgive you. When you forgive others, Allah will forgive you. So if I can readily forgive others, Allah will readily forgive me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us not to hold things in our hearts and to forgive people. One might ask, well, I can forgive them, but I don't want to actually uh, forget this. Yes, no problem. You don't forget it. We, we should never forget what people have done against us. But what's very important is for us to forgive them. So you don't want to be bitten from the same uh, hole twice, but you definitely don't mind what, you know, forgiving them. So I've forgiven, but I don't want to rekindle a relationship. That's fine. I don't want to visit this person again. I don't want to interact with them much again. Salam alaikum wa alaikum as salam. That's it. Maybe, how are you? I'm fine. You don't need to have anything more to do with them, no matter who they are. Because if they have bitten you quite badly, you're just a human. It's not going to be easy to forget things and you shouldn't. You know, if they've worked on the relationship for a long time, it will automatically be forgotten. But if you, you don't have to forget things because sometimes it might happen again. And if you were not conscious of it, you're going to tell yourself, how could I have had this thing happening to me twice from the same person? So my brothers and sisters, you want to achieve the forgiveness of Allah. Allah will forgive you when you forgive people. But at times Allah may forgive you even if you haven't forgiven someone because he knows you were wrong and you're just a human and you're holding it. So seek the forgiveness of Allah always for everything. So then as we entering the last 10 nights of Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ used to take them seriously. He used to actually uh, wake his family up at night in order to pray the tahajjud and qiyam. And he used to spend the, the nights in ibadah. And he's taught us i'tikaf in the masjid. So to spend those last 10 nights in the masjid is a very great deed. I know with the virus, it may not be possible in many masajid, but wherever it is, with all the precautions in place, let's try to liven that too. It's something good. 
and it really is amazing. Nowadays, people take their phones and everything else inside, which is okay, but make sure you don't waste your time. The idea is to spend those 10 days and 10 nights in a semi-seclusion where you're, you're just you and Allah and you're engaging in worship, you're, you're thanking Him, you're praising Him, you're reading the Quran and you cut off the rest of the world. It's a meditation and it's a beautiful time of reflection and ibadah, primarily worship. And you will gain, gain the goodness and the taqwa uh, by the will of Allah if your intentions are right and you do it the proper way. So as we're entering these last 10 nights, take them seriously. Now for everyone, let's talk about a few practical things that you could do. Number one, you can increase your recitation of the Quran and make it every single night. A portion of the day and a portion of the night. 10 minutes in the day and perhaps 20 minutes at night with the Quran. That's nothing for the month of Ramadan. That's actually very little. Similarly, your adhkar, praise Allah. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu yuhi wa yumitu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. Beautiful praise of Allah where if you were to repeat it a hundred times, you have a massive, massive reward. Similarly, some random adhkar that you may learn. Remembrance of Allah subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al-azim. No fixed time to repeat that, but you can repeat it, you can say it, you declare it and so many other words of praise. My brothers and sisters, with that, as we're preparing for the last 10 nights of Ramadan, like I said, we increase our Quran, we increase our dhikr. We must increase our prayer as well, especially the voluntary prayer in both quality and quantity. So make sure your qiyam is in place. Make sure that you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in mind all the time. You're conscious of him. Make sure that you're standing in prayer. That's the qiyam is good. You know, you, do, you take your time in sujood, in the prostration, in the bowing, you're in the standing, in the listening of the Qur'an, and you enjoy it in a beautiful way. So when you've increased that, you know, at night you, you've got the units of prayer, you've, you can add to them, you can get up for tahajjud, and you read a little bit more, you seek the forgiveness of Allah. Sometimes if you're a working class person, very busy, you can do two more units. You can do two units of tahajjud. You know, it's not necessary that you do eight or twelve. That's... Perhaps there are recommendations, but you can do two, you can do four, you know, in sets of two. So liven up that night at least a little bit. And then there is a prayer that we're taught. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are forgiving. You love to forgive. So forgive me. When Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if I were to witness this night of decree or, and, and uh, this night of power, what should I say? He says, say... Oh Allah, you are most forgiving, you love to forgive, so forgive me and Allah will forgive. And Allah definitely will forgive because he loves to forgive. Imagine. So every night from these nights, spend the time of the night saying that dua. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are most forgiving, you love to forgive, so forgive me. Repeat that every single night a few times. There is no fixed number mentioned in the hadith. You can repeat it as many times as you want or even say it once. But if you repeat it throughout the night, genuinely seeking Allah's forgiveness, it is better for you. Because when you witness that night of decree, you would definitely earn the forgiveness of Allah and you ask Allah to accept your forgiveness. May Allah grant us all goodness and accept our dua. Similarly, we have our needs. We have things we want to get done. We have problems globally. We have problems nationally. Perhaps, you know, we have problems within our own circles, communities, families, and within ourselves. Pray for all of that, the goodness. How you pray is you seek the forgiveness of Allah. You send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad, peace be upon him. You praise Allah. You seek the forgiveness of Allah. And then you ask Allah what you want. Then you send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu And your dua or supplication is completed. And you can do that in any language whatsoever. So keep asking Allah for these needs. And don't only ask for yourself. Ask for others as well. It's something really amazing. Allah will bless you and grant you the goodness. And he will give you. Because that is him. He, is, he, he gives. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are some ways of preparing for these last 10 nights. Make sure every night you, you listen to the Quran as well. Listen to it. It's beautiful. Did you know that the easiest way to memorize the Quran is through repeatedly listening to, this, to the verses constantly? So you repeatedly listen to the verses. It's the easiest way to memorize the Quran. 
There's no easier way than that. To listen repeatedly. You won't even make mistakes thereafter. Listen to the same reciter of the same verses again and again and again. And you will never go wrong. That is the easiest way to memorize the Quran according to my experience. And also when you repeatedly read it. That's the next way of learning it. So number one, according to me, method of learning the Quran by heart or memorizing it is to take a portion at a time and repeatedly listen to it and then read along with it and then read it yourself. And I know people who've done this even without looking into the Quran. But it's good to look in the Quran because then when you read later on in life, you can actually see the pages in your mind of the Quran. (laughs) That's amazing. To this day, I can see when I read, I know which part of the page the recital is and so on. Some people are much stronger than I am. They can give you which line it is and which, uh, you know, they can give you all the details of the verse. I'm not yet on that level where I can give you some detail, but perhaps not every single detail. But alhamdulillah, at least we memorize the Quran and we uh, repeat it every single day, a portion of it. My brothers and sisters, let's become better this year, this Ramadan. Many people have lost their lives. Think of them, pray for them. And when we pray for those who've passed away, the idea is also to be prepared for the day we're going to go. So may Allah grant us all paradise, make it easy for all of us. I've spoken for 25 minutes and this is the countdown to the last 10 nights of Ramadan, the most powerful of these nights. We're going to be fasting, we're going to be praying, we're going to be conscious of Allah, we're going to improve ourselves the way we speak, the dress code, we're going to improve our character, solve your problems, don't make someone else's life difficult. Remember that. Do not make someone else's life difficult because if you do, Allah will create someone who's going to make your life difficult at some point in your life. Remember that. You know, don't lend people, don't lend people a bad loan. Lend them a good loan so it comes back to you in goodness. May Allah forgive all of us.